and I'm ready to fight. And he just keeps on coming after me. He's trying to hit me. He's trying to grab a hold of me. Uh, and as he's coming at me, that's when the other gentleman out of the car jumps out. So I didn't know how many people was in the car. Now I feel like, okay, I'm outnumbered now. Two people are going to jump me. And uh, Mr. Browning, Aaron Browning, he walks around the, the car, and uh, he comes over to us, and then he's, he's trying to throw some, th some punches too. But while, while I was in a defensive stance, um, they weren't able to really get anything you know, there was no punches really thrown at that point. Uh, I wasn't throwing any punches, and they couldn't get anything to, to land on me. Okay. At some point, did you hear someone announce that they were a police officer? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, right after Aaron Browning comes around, you know, he, he hits me twice in the, in the pectoral muscle. I'm still looking at Mr. Casey, and then somebody says police, you know, for the first time. Okay. And what did you do when you heard that? As soon as I heard police okay first I had to just sort of figure out what was going on I had to register what had happened because you know nothing about anything that they had done said that there was police officers I just thought that I was gonna uh, uh, be jumped so when I heard police I mean I'm not trying to get in trouble I'm trying to you know uh, go to school get a good job so I'm not I'm not trying to fight the police as soon as the police said that they're the police as soon as they admit that's who they were I, I took my my you know my defensive stance and I immediately put a, a surrender stance up, and I said, stop, stop, stop. Uh, why, why are we doing this? Stop, stop, stop. Okay. And at that point, had you even seen any identification? Um, uh, yeah. So, you know, I didn't know who they were, and I was still skeptical just because somebody says, you know, police, that doesn't really, that could have been still anybody. So I was, when they said it, I'm scanning the, uh, Joel Casey's entire body, and I'm trying to find something, anything that would say that they're the police officers, and I see underneath his flannel there's a little there's a badge underneath the flannel so I see the bottom part of a badge they looked really serious when they was you know declaring that they were the police I saw the badge and then uh, that's when I, I resigned myself and surrendered myself to the police okay and at some point during that did you guys fall to the ground yeah <laughs> so as soon as I surrendered myself to the police I have my hands up and I say stop 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 why are you doing this or, or what? What next? What? Stop! 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 What? What do we? What do you want to do now? You know, because like, you know, just, you know, the whole situation was confusing. And as soon as I put my hands up, that's when Aaron Browning ta tackles me and Mr. Casey, and then we're lying on the ground. Um, when I hit, when I landed on the ground, I'm lying on my back, and I hit the back of my head on the concrete. Okay. And what happened next after you were on the ground? After I was on the ground, I'm on my back, and. Uh, I just leaned, leaned my head up just like this, and uh, Mr. Joel Casey, he'd already got up, and he was towering over me, um, ready to give a, a cowboy punch, which is like a punch that comes out like back here. It's like for full might, you know, you could do that, but you could also see it coming a mile away. So he was going, he was going to punch me in the face, and so when he swung his right fist, I'm lying down like this, and I turn my head like this because um, I, I didn't want to get punched right in the face, so I, you know, I turn my head like this, and he punches the, the pavement right behind me and then uh, he's even more mad he just punched the pavement so then he takes his left fist and does a cowboy punch and this time I, I don't even move my head I don't even put my hands in front of me he just punches me right in the face and I'm bleeding all over the place and, and breaks my nose it shatters my nose okay and during this process had they told you that you were under arrest no Did no. they tried to put handcuffs on you um, as soon as they had punched me, they had me stand up and they put hand. I, I assumed I was under arrest, but they never said it. They stood me up, they put handcuffs on me, and they sat me on the curb. And I, I just sat on the curb, bleeding all over myself for about an hour until the, the sergeant got there. And so, at what point did you give up um, in this struggle? As soon as they said that they're the police. As soon as it, it you know, become pretty clear that they were the police, even though I still, I was still skeptical. Um, that's when I put my hands up. Okay, could you tell me about how much time went by from the moment you started crossing the intersection until the moment they put you in handcuffs? It was super fast. I would say two, three minutes, maybe four tops. Okay, and then after you were arrested, how long did you stay at the intersection? I was there for an hour. And what happened after that? So, um, uh, right after, right after what? Right after um, you left the intersection, where did you go? Well, there was a, uh, right, right after they had punched me, I was really mad about the whole situation. And so 
uh, I, I, was, I was mad at them, and so I was, you know, I, I didn't say what they said that I said, but I did say um, a lot of obscenities. And uh, I, my main point of what I was asking them is, do you all feel powerful? You know, you just hit an innocent man that was on the ground that was just walking to the store that did nobody any harm. Do you all feel powerful? And so they had messed it up, what they had said. It wasn't, you know, do you want to F me? It's do you want to F me up? Are you all going to F me up farther? Um, so. Okay. And what kind of injury happened to you from this? Um, the, mostly it was bumps and scrapes all over my body. My rectal, or pectoral muscle was uh, uh, really sore um, afterwards. But the main thing was them um, breaking my my face or breaking my nose, in, you know, uh, two different spots. And was your nose broken before this? No. Okay. One moment here. Mr. Masters, related to this incident, have you filed a federal lawsuit over this? Yes. Okay. And that is currently pending in federal court right now? Correct. That's all. All right. Mr. Bryce? Yes, may we approach, please? Do you think this is the appropriate time to see what I'm going to be asking him some questions about in reference to um, some of the previous statements that he's given? What I'd like to do is this, if possible. I'd like for you to uh, question him and then uh, go, go. So when, when you question him, I want you to get those things. You know, he'll either admit or deny certain things that you are looking to prove or to present to the jury, right? So I want you to ask him the questions first, and then we can establish whether he's admitting or denying whatever it is that you think he's going to admit or deny. Once, I think, so the point is, I think you've got to go through some testimony with him, elicit some answers from him, and then it's my understanding that based on how he answers them, you're going to have videos to either refresh his recollection or perhaps right. ask him to rectify. I'm not right. sure it's going to be. But Judge, this is, he, he has given about four, at least four different sworn testimonies about what happened. Wait a minute. How are they sworn? Well, one, he gave it to the grand jury. Okay. Okay. Two, he gave it to PSU, which was investigating the conduct okay. of the officers. Uh, he's, uh, he's done it in his interrogatories in response to the re interrogatory request in the federal lawsuit. In the civil suit. In the civil suit. And... I want to say that he's filed an affidavit also with PSU, okay? And right, so he's sworn on all those sworn statements, and you say that those are inconsistent. They're, those are a little bit inconsistent with what he just said. Okay. Okay. Okay, so but you have to, okay. before you can impeach him, you've got to establish I, that he's saying, testifying contrarily. Okay, well, I mean, I think and he's I already know, done I'm it. Familiar with, I'm familiar with all these affidavits and sworn statements. Um, I've reviewed his testimony before internal affairs. I went. I personally helped him and assisted him with the interrogatories. Okay. Um, if it's there are differences, um, they don't need to be minor. Yeah. I, to I haven't. I know he testified there, but I wasn't present. For you that. have a transcript of that, Carl? I do. Right. You may want to give them a copy of that transcript. Well, yeah, I don't have a written transcript. I have the recording. You have a recording. You yeah. Don't have a transcript. Yeah, right. But I don't have the whole recording because it talks about the felony charges and it talks about them being before the grand jury. So I only have that portion that talks about that gives his testimony. And it's only about three minutes. I think it's like two and a half minutes. Is. Okay. Judge, I guess my expectation is that he is going that he would take the stand, which he has, and that he will give a version that has been consistent all along, and that has not been the case. Oh, so he's got inconsistencies. But the question is, what, what, what's the, you know, how big are the, you know, and again, I can't tell you how to try your case, but, you know, uh, he can be inconsistent about a lot of things, but the things that matter or not, and that's up for you to decide. Okay. 
And but the thing is this: if we're going to use something that they don't have, that the defense doesn't have, they have a you know before it can be used, they're going to need to see what it is or oh, yeah. hear what it is or whatever. So we're going to get bogged down, and, and that's fine with previewing the evidence before we present the evidence. Okay. And well. that's what we'll have to do. But what I'd like for you to do is spend some time questioning the, the, the witness to at least force, force him to take a stand on particular issues or particular statements okay. or whatever. Okay. And that's then right. after that, we can say, here's, you know, regarding this issue, I have this part of a video. Regarding this issue, I have a grand jury statement. Or we are going to this, I got an affidavit, whatever. Okay. I think we got to work through some. Okay, them. that's fine. Right. Is that all you want? Yes, Your Honor, it sounds fair. Any other comments? No. All right. Thank okay. you. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Stegman, take this right here. Mr. Price, why don't you get your side kit to take a look at those? All right, Mr. Price. Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Masters, good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm okay. Um, let me make sure I understand your testimony. Um, and uh, forgive me if I'm just a little bit slow with this, sir. Uh, first and foremost, are, are you you? I think you indicated that your your middle name is David. Is that correct? Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. Mr. Masters, do you also do do you when you when you use your name, do you do you often use your middle name, or do you just use Jonathan Masters? Uh, Jonathan Masters. I my friends call me Johnny, but Jonathan Masters is my professional uh, uh, name. Okay. Have you ever used John Masters? Sure. Okay. Um, now. You've heard the testimony of Detective Cass and Detective Browning. Is that correct? Yes, that's okay. correct. Okay. And I want to piggyback off of something that they said and just simply ask you a few questions, sir. One of the things that they indicated was that after this encounter, you all sat down there at the intersection of 4th and M Street. Is that correct? Uh, I was sitting down and they were standing up uh, interviewing me. And you all were having a conversation, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think you indicated in answering counsel's questions, you said that you were very upset during that time. No, no. Uh, at the time when we were talking, we were very cordial and we was cordial. After my string of obscenities, after I was punched in the face, you know, I got it all out. And then we just talk like we have been friends for years. Okay. And this is another string of obscenities after the no. initial fuck you? Well, that's not a string. That's just one. No, no, one I, I understand. Okay. But that's one. So you say to somebody in the vehicle, you say fuck you at the beginning. Is that correct? I responded an F word to the F word that I'd got, yes. Okay. When you responded the way you did, did you feel like you were already upset about something, sir? No. Okay. Did you, prior to leaving your residence there on Iowa Street, who was back at your residence? Objection, Your Honor. I'm not sure. Come on up here for a second. What's the nature of the objection? It's relevance. Well, Who cares what he was doing before that? Well, no, I mean, Judge, I think it matters because he says that his, he was there with his girlfriend. And he says this in some other documentation. The police officer said that he was there with his girlfriend. And the reason he was upset that day 
He went out with some a girlfriend well, or something. Right, because he was upset his girlfriend judged him. I'm just trying to show his state of mind. He was not as calm as he's given the impression of his jury. Well, I'm sure he wasn't, but I mean, okay. Emotional state of mind's not an element of the offense.